Time now to dip into the world of business and finance with Charles Pellegrin, beginning with Donald Trump's latest move to clamp down what he calls unfair trade practices. Charles, tell us more. Well, the U.S. president uh, will be signing two new executive orders on Friday, hoping to make good on his campaign promises to make trade more fair. The first one will be the commissioning of a report on trade practices that contribute to the trade deficit. It'll detail specific causes for the deficit, country by country, product by product. The second executive order will seek to improve the collection of anti-dumping and countervailing duties. This will prompt the Department of Homeland Security to step up the fight against violations of U.S. trade laws by, for instance, seizing counterfeit goods. And Charles, this is of course happening a week before a meeting between Donald Trump and the Chinese president. That's right. And the U.S.'s largest trade deficit is with China. And uh, Beijing has often been a target of criticism by the American president. Well, he took to Twitter on Thursday to explain that the meeting with Xi Jinping at the Mar-a-Lago resort was crucial, saying that they were responsible for the trade deficit and the loss of American jobs. He then summoned American companies to look elsewhere for commercial partners. In response, the foreign affairs vice minister explained in a press conference that China's actual policy was to promote more balanced trade. China will further increase domestic demand and will also raise demand for foreign goods and services, including those from the United States. Chinese investment in the U.S. has been rising rapidly in the recent years. This business activity has given lots of employment opportunities. This also helps improve the trade imbalance between China and the United States. That was the Chinese Foreign Affairs Vice Minister speaking there. And Charles, has this had any effect on the Asian markets this Friday? Well, we're seeing a mixed picture in Asia uh, this Friday morning as uh, investors are a little nervous after those uh, tweets by President Trump. You can see the Shanghai Composite uh, up by 0.3%, buoyed by positive economic data for the month of March, both in manufacturing and services in China. The Nikkei is uh, down 0.8% at the close. Uh, the Hang Seng in Hong Kong down 0.7%, and the Kospi down 0.2%, that's in South Korea. Uh, let's have a look at European markets. Uh, they opened in negative territory mostly as global investors are eyeing a rising dollar and are awaiting fresh economic data, which appears to suggest slowing growth on the European continent. You can see the FTSE in London down by a third of a percent, so is the Paris 40, and uh, the DAX in Frankfurt down 0.1%. OK, from the European markets to Latin America now. In Argentina, people have been pouring onto the streets in Buenos Aires to protest against the government's policies. That's right. Uh, the labor unions there are demanding salary increases as well as an end to job cuts. Since taking office in 2015, President Mauricio Macri has tried to implement reforms to liberalize the economy. And while there is a moderate growth in Argentina, it's come with high inflation. Catherine Viet has the story. Marching for their rights, hundreds of workers took to the streets in Buenos Aires to protest government reforms. The unions are demanding an end to the widespread layoffs in both the public and private sectors. They vowed to hold a series of strikes to keep up pressure on the government of Maurizio Macri. The reality is that the people no longer want to live under this economic plan. And after the strike, we need a commitment that we are here that there will be a fight to change this economic model which harms us, which excludes us, and which is a threat to us. Many are also angry about the rising inflation, which topped 40 percent last year after the government removed energy subsidies, pushing millions below the poverty line. We're speaking out because we're living in a real social calamity. 1.3 million new poor people in just one year. Let us think what could happen in Argentina if we have four full years of such a huge social calamity. Despite the street protest, the Argentinian economy is growing. In the third and fourth quarters of 2016, it increased by 0.1 percent and 0.5 percent. And since October, officials say that around 25,000 new jobs are being created each month. 
And while the situation in the capital is tense, it's a different story in the countryside, where the agricultural sector is booming, helping to drive the economic recovery. Catherine Viette reporting there. And finally, Charles, um, I never ever eat here, drunk or otherwise. But you have um, a final story on a drastic change in a McDonald's recipe. Absolutely. A drunk or never, the Golden Arches are going to switch from frozen beef patties to fresh ones, at least for its quarter pounder burgers. The change will affect a majority of U.S. restaurants by the middle of 2018. The move is meant to keep up with the competition of the rivals like Wendy's or Five Guys and Shake Shack. Um, McDonald's had been using frozen beef patties since the 1970s. It's a big change. It comes with one downside, though, is a, a higher risk of um, sanitary problems like E. coli and things like that, though. Okay, Charles Pellegrin, I hope at home that hasn't upset you too much if you are a fan of McDonald's. But, Charles, thank you very much for that <laughs> spin through the latest business news.